stop by Pete's Garage. You know, we do a lot of great projects here, and I have a lot of fun building engines, uh, working on cars, and doing all kinds of things with you guys. And there's one thing we really don't talk about. We talk about building engines, removing engines, installing engines, testing engines, all sorts of engine work, but we never really talk about one of the important things is moving engines. How do you move your engine around your shop? How do you get it in the vehicle? How do you get it out of the vehicle? How do I lift it up? A lot of people ask what I use to lift it up. So we're going to talk about lifting and moving engines today. And we're going to start with a simple bracket. Now these engine lift brackets are very uh, cheap, 15 bucks. You can get these anywhere, Summit, Jags, wherever. They're very uh, handy and very useful. So if you get a simple bracket like this, I'm going to put this on an engine. I'm going to show you how it works. I'm going to show you what to watch out for if you do use one of these brackets and some other options if you have to lift your engine up or pull the engine out of the vehicle. Let me show you how this works. Now you can see these things are pretty universal. There's a, a lot of hole patterns on here depending on the manifold or carburetor, I'm sorry, the manifold or engine you're trying to connect to. And a couple, uh, three different holes in there and I'll show you why, why, you wanna, why that's important. But first it's pretty simple, you take off the four bolts off your carburetor and then you remove your carburetor very gently. And something that's important to note, if you see how thick your carburetor is and you see how thin that plate is. So you have to make up for that difference. And I'll show you what I mean. Put the carburetor down here. And you can leave the gasket on, take the gasket off, it's really up to you. And this thing really just drops into place. Now, if you have studs, if you're using studs to hold on your carburetor, the threads or the boss of the stud, the unthreaded part, is going to be sticking up. So when you go to bolt this down, you're not going to be able to get a firm grip with the... Um, with the nut that goes on there. So, I'll grab some of these nuts, bolts, and washers. Let's see and the important thing is when you do this, you'll have to like stack up a bunch of washers to make sure that when you put the nut on, you're actually getting a hold of getting a hold of the uh, thread. And it's threaded and you can get it nice and tight. If you don't do that, what you'll end up doing is having having it loose like that. And when you have it loose like that, you're putting the, the, the stress on the stud and on, on an angle on the stud and you run a risk of pulling it out the stud or stud right out of the um, intake manifold. Now I'm going to take out this take this off for a second. I and mean, you always want to be careful not to drop anything inside the engine because that happens. Game over, right? Okay, now I'm going to set these down. So you have a stud here and it's screwed into the intake manifold and it's pretty simple. A steel stud into the aluminum intake manifold is only going to be so strong. So when you bolt this down, you want to make sure you have all the bolts on all the way around and have it bolted down. Or to, You don't have to torque it down, but it should be down nice and firm, nice and tight onto the uh, intake manifold. Now you can see I have these all even. And I'm just going to put them down snug. It doesn't have to be torqued down. You're not trying to crank this thing down. You're just trying to hold it in place. And you're not trying to crush the gasket underneath it. You just want to put these so they're all kind of even here. All right. There, now they're all kind of even. We'll cross pattern, make sure they're all tight. All right. Now, let's get a hoist. Now, there are a couple ways you can lift it with a standard cherry picker type engine hoist. Uh, and if you buy one, make sure it's of good quality and it's going to support the weight you're planning on lifting. An engine block like that can weigh up to maybe five, 600 pounds. And you want to make sure the lifting device is strong enough to support it because it's not worth risking your life or having the engine fall. You can pinch a finger, cut off a finger, anything can happen. Really, really dangerous. So be safe. Look at your hoist. Make sure all the fasteners are nice and tight. Everything is in good repair. You don't have anything that's damaged. And also the connecting chain. The chain, you want to make sure that's in good repair. The hook and the, and the bolt that puts it together. If it's worn, just replace it because it's not worth taking a risk. So you have the portable hoist like this. But I also have the standard trolley hoist where you have it on a beam. And this just rides up and down on a beam like this. It makes it easy to slide things sideways. The problem with this is you can only go up and down and left and right. It makes it really, really hard to position. So that, that hoist is a little more restrictive, where the cherry picker type hoist, you can move it around and position your engine very easily. You can rent one of these. These are pretty easy to rent. If you can use it for a few hours, you can have your engine ready to roll, just get it unbolted, have it ready to roll, rent a cherry picker, pull the engine out, and you're all set. Now, let's look at these three holes in this engine bracket and see which one you should choose. 
The purpose of the three holes are so that you pick up the engine in the center with the, uh, or the center of gravity so that when you pick it up, the engine's straight. The last thing you want to do is pick it up and have it tilt. And why that's important is because if you think, look at these bolts or the studs that are going into your intake manifold. If I lift up this weight and all of a sudden this weight shifts like that, all of the weight is going to be at an angle on these and you can either break your intake manifold, you can bend the, the stud or bend the bolt in the uh, uh, intake manifold, and you could damage it, and then you're, you're kind of in, in a rough situation there, but you might even have to replace the intake manifold if it's aluminum. Cast iron is a little stronger, but I have seen the, uh, the, the tangs on an intake manifold crack off if you put too much stress on one of these studs. So when I look at the engine, even though this is the center of the intake manifold, this is kind of the center of the gravity of the engine, right about there. So when I put it there, it's going to lift it up nice and straight. And what you want to do is lift up real slow and as you start to put weight on the engine or a weight on your hoist you will see it start to lift up and see how it's starting to lift up backwards it's doing that because I have a torque converter on the back if you have the transmission on there it is going to uh, lift up at an angle so I'm going to take this and let it down and I'll put it in the middle and now when I lift it up, since I have the torque converter on there, this should lift up a little straighter. Again, I'm just trying to lift it up so it's straight. I don't want to put any stress on any of those, on any of those studs. So now it's lifting up a little straighter. Okay? So that's the way you use that kind of bracket. Let me lower this back down so I take the stress off. The next thing you may want to invest in or borrow or rent or whatever is a load leveler like this. This load leveler goes onto the hoist and the nice thing about this is you got these four chains that are on here and you got to be careful you don't want to mess up your engine, damage it in any way, but you have these four chains that come off of here and they have holes both on the side and on the front. So you have the option of either connecting it right to the intake manifold if you want to if the bolts are big enough or bolting it, taking a chain and putting it on the back of the head or if there's an extra hole, there are extra holes on these heads, so I can put it right on this head and I can lift it up like this. Uh, and what you use the load leveler for is this moves back and forth. You put a, an impact wrench on here and I can take this and I can shift the load forward or back on my hoist. And that's really handy when you're putting the engine in the vehicle or taking it out because you can take the transmission, you can tilt it, lift it up and then turn it and, and level the load as you're taking it in, uh, taking it out or putting it in. If it wasn't for this thing, I wouldn't be able to put engines in myself or take engines out by myself. It's a real handy device. I've had this thing forever and it really lasts a long time. So a low level or something that you really want to get if you're going to be putting in or taking out a vehicle. Now once you get it out, the question is, what are you going to do with it once you get it out? You can't just lay it on the ground. Well, you could, but you don't want to damage it. So let's talk about engine stands. Now once you have the engine out and you have the transmission disconnected, you need to put it on something. And I use these engine stands, and these engine stands are really, really handy. This one is specifically made for a 440, which is why it fits perfectly on this block right here. And they're pretty cheap. I've seen them as cheap as 35 bucks up to 75, 80 bucks. Or you can buy universal ones, universal ones to fit almost every type of engine. And this is what it looks like when you buy it. It's just a simple device, and it's a cradle. You put it together, and it holds the engine and uh, it makes it real easy to work on, transport, sit in your shop. So if you get one of these things, you can keep it and you'll have it for uh, any time you take the engine out. Now, you can, you can borrow these. I've seen these for rent at different shops. And if you're working with a machine shop or a, a, a place that will help you with your engine, they'll even borrow you these, uh, a loan one to you. The, the machine shop that I work with and the dyno guy, he's willing to give me a engine cradle, for whatever, whatever engine I'm working on, so I can get it to him and get it back and then I just return the cradle. So get yourself an engine cradle and it makes it real easy to, st uh, to keep your engine on the floor, easy to work on, and not only that, it makes it real safe to work on. Safety, very, very important. Also, these cradles are made so that you can put casters on. So if you want to put wheels on here, all you have to do is buy the casters, and there's four mounting points on here. You put casters on there, it makes it real easy to roll the engine around. I have a couple of uh, engine dollies and uh, engine cradles with wheels on them, and it makes it real easy to roll stuff around. I'm even using this cradle to ship this engine. Very easy to ship with. 
Uh, you put it in a crate, bolt it down, you can ship it anywhere. This one happens to be going to the United Kingdom, it's be going on an air freight, and those cradles work fantastic. You bolt it right to the crate, and it works awesome. Now you guys know that when I find a great service or someone who's awesome who can really help you, I'd like to share it with you. Uh, this crate was built by uh, Carl from Buffalo Crating and Logistics. If you need to ship anything, you need a, a certified crate for overseas, logistics, paperwork, explosives, hazardous material, no matter what it is, give Carl a call. He can help you out and point you in the right direction. Here's his phone number. So the real question is, do you need all this stuff? The answer is really no. Uh, before I had all this fancy equipment and all this stuff that makes my job a lot easier, I have taken engines out, I've stripped them down, I've taken blocks, uh, I've taken them out with a 2x4 and some rope and a couple of friends and a lot of manpower and a lot of uh, sweat labor, but I've pulled engines out with just rope and a 2x4, so you really don't need all this fancy stuff. If you're a shade tree mechanic and you've got a big enough tree in the backyard, you can pull your engine, your, your car underneath that, that uh, branch Throw a rope over it, put up your, your hoist, and just yank it out that way. You don't have to have all the stuff. I'm just trying to show you some of the stuff that you do, that you can get. And if you do use it, you got to use it safely. You don't want to ruin the engine. You don't want to damage any of the parts. And most importantly, you don't want to get hurt. Don't hurt yourself taking the engine out. You know what it's like if you just pinch your finger and you're turning a wrench and you, you bust a knuckle when you're trying to get a nut loose or something like that? Imagine having an engine fall on you, something that weighs 500 pounds. Something that weighs 500 pounds that's falling a foot and lands on you, is, has a force of what, uh, 32 feet per second, roughly it's going to be like almost 1,000 pounds. It'll fracture your foot. So, it's, and it's sharp enough, if you hit the right spot, it'll, it'll, it can cut off your finger. So be very, very careful. That's all I'm saying. Whatever method you choose, just be safe. Don't do it when you're drinking and say, hey guys, hold my beer, let's pull this engine up. Not a good idea. Just work safe. I want to see everybody get, get their job done without getting hurt. That's the most important thing. Um, if you have any comments, please leave them below. If you haven't subscribed already, please click subscribe and like my Facebook page so you can stay up to date with all my projects. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.